What's up guys and welcome to the second video about state management principles in Jetpack Compose. In the first video we have talked about state hoisting and why it's actually so important and how to apply it. In case you have missed this, you can check this video by clicking this link above. In this video we are going to talk about creating state by delegates with the equal sign, if you should use mutable state off, mutable state list off and all that kinds of creation state and also where you should actually put in your state, if it's fine to manage the state inside a composable or if it would be better to create a separate state holder class like a view model state holder or composable state holder class. And we will also make the state um, surviving configuration changes. So when the app uh, is from portrait to landscape changed or even if the app's process is killed and it gets recreated. All right, okay, I'm in Android Studio and I've just created this example screen composable which holds a column and a text which says counter for now and the button without a functionality and the display text for the button is increase. So we want to increase a counter and want to display it. And for that we need a counter state. And let's have a look first why we need to always use remember when it comes to state inside a composable function. We could say something like var counter by mutable state of zero. And let's not talk about this by for now. I will come to this uh, very soon. Uh, let's just know that this will create a state for us. And we get a compiler error here because uh, the compiler already um, detects that we don't use remember here. But let's silence this warning with this lint suppress. And then we can see why remember is so important because this example won't work if we want to display this counter. And in, when we click on the button, we want to uh, increase it. So we could assume that we will have a counter which counts from zero up to uh, as much as the button is pressed. Let's start this and have a look. If we click on this increase, then nothing happens. This is because the state here is not remembered. Each time a button click occurs, this counter variable will be increased, but this will also cause the example screen composable to recompose. And since this is not remembered, this counter variable is always initialized with zero again. So this, this will increase the counter from zero to one, but immediately sets it back to zero. And this is the problem here, and this is why we should use remember. Let's uh, change this. We say by remember and copy and paste this mutable state of in here. And then we can start the app again and have a look at the displayed counter. And now you can see the counter increases appropriately. All right, okay, let's talk about this by keyword. What's the difference between this by keyword and this equal sign? If we apply this equal sign, then you can see that the counter variable can't be increased anymore like this. Because if we have a closer look at this counter, then we can see that a mutable state is wrapped around our integer. We need to get the raw value, so the counter.value here, which is our integer, and then we can increase it. If we would let it like this and print the counter here, it will just print the object. Um, let me quickly show you this. Now you can see that there's an object which gets printed because it's not the direct integer value, it's the object, the state object. And we always need to access the value when we use the equal sign because our counter is now a mutable state of. As you can see here, mutable state is wrapped around the integer. The only difference now if we use the by keyword instead of the equal sign is that this counter.value call happens under the hood. We don't need to take care of it. We delegate this call. Um, in general, if we see the whole picture, nothing changes. We always need to use counter.value. We always need to access the state's value and not the state itself. But if we use the by delegate here, then uh, this will ha be handled for us. We don't need to take care of it. This is just uh, syntactic sugar. All right, okay, let's talk about configuration changes when uh, our state is managed inside a composable like here. We will uh, remove this value call and increase the counter as we did before. Let's launch this and increase the counter by five 
and then we will apply a configuration change because right now this state won't survive a configuration change. We can see this if we uh, rotate the phone from portrait to landscape, then the counter is zero again. To avoid this and to make it even survive process kills and recreation of the app, we can use remember savable. Let's launch the app again and then you will see that this works now. If we increase the counter by five again, and rotate the phone, then you can see the counter is still 5. So always be careful if you manage the state inside your composable, this won't survive configuration changes if you just uh, use remember. Use remember savable for that. The next thing I want to show is to use always remember with keys if you are depending on a value which could be changed. Let's create another composable. Uh, I will simply call this tests and this will take a text of type string. This doesn't matter here. If we say var text state by remember and we say here mutable state of and we pass this text. All right, then we have this text state, but this will only be saved the first time. If another text comes in, if this composable gets invoked with another kind of text, then this won't trigger again because um, uh, this remember key is true by default, I think, and um, uh, it does not trigger anymore if we pass through. This is the same when we have um, some um, side effect handling here. Launch effect or something like this will also just trigger once if we pass through as the key. We can pass text as the key and then this text state will be updated every time we get another text variable. So if this text here actually changes, then we will create another mutable state, a new mutable state and uh, update this text state accordingly. This is just uh, important to know. Maybe you face something like this, but normally you should also um, extract the state out of this uh, test composable, which I mentioned in the state hoisting um, video in the last video. But uh, maybe you face some situations which are like this and then uh, yeah, use remember with text, of course, or of course, uh, remember savable, which also takes these keys here. Okay, the next thing is list state management, because I have also faced this problem sometimes at the beginning and I wondered why my state isn't updating. If we use such a list of maybe with two strings like this, A and B. And in here, when we click on this button, we will say counter. Okay, well, let's rename this to list um, uh, and also um, uh, get the first element of this list, for example, to display. And if we then say list dot um, two mutable list and we want to add an item, we want to add this at the first index and we want to um, uh, say C for the item. If we launch this, then we could assume that our car, okay, this is still called counter and the rotation is also still applied. Um, we have counter A actually because uh, our list dot first is A because of this list above. If we now want to add something to this list uh, to the first position at index zero and click on increase, then nothing happens. Although we insert this element to this list and yeah, as I already said, I have experienced this my own and uh, I wondered why this is not updating because it considers the whole list as a state. So it only will be updated if the whole list changes and not single elements of it. So if we comment this out and say something like this, list is equal to list of C, A and B. And if we launch this now, then the UI will be updated with this new list and the C value, which is the first index item, will be displayed. Okay, but how can we fix this with this um, uh, other approach if we want to update the UI when we just change a single element of the list? We can simply change this mutable state of to mutable state list of and also remove this list of inside here. And then we also get a compiler error because uh, this does not have a set and get value, we don't have a delegate here. We need to use the equal sign. We also need to remove this remember savable because for such a list, we need to provide a custom saver and this would be out of the scope of this video. But if you also wanna make this state list savable during configuration changes, 
then you should provide a custom saver. Down here, we can change this line to list.add at index 0 with the character C. If we launch the application again, we will see that the UI will update if we add this item to the existing list. You can see counter double colon C. Okay, with this approach, we can also listen for state changes inside a list and not only when the whole list is created again or updated or something like this. All right, okay, this was it for creating state, different possibilities and so on. Now we will come to state holder classes, which are very important when your composables just hold too much state. Let's imagine if you don't have just a list here, you also have 10 variables and also a scroll state or a scaffold state where you want to show different snack bars and all so on, then you would have 100 lines of codes just uh, for the state inside such a composable. And for that, we can use state holder classes. And there are also different state holder classes. We can create a composable as a state holder class or a view model, which is a specific kind of state holder class. Okay, I've removed the composables from the previous example and added some state here. We have, for example, a scaffold state, a scroll state, if we have some kind of list, if we should show a confirm button or not, is indicated by this state variable, and we also have a counter. This comment here indicates that there can be even more state, and as long as you don't have that much state like we had in the last example, it's okay to manage the state inside the composable. It's still clear, it's still not too complex. But if you have like this scenario with like 10 more state variables, then this can be really confusing. And if you have this case, if you need to manage a lot of state, then we should use so-called state holder classes. Let's create such a state holder class. Normally I would put this in a separate file, but for the sake of this tutorial, we can do it down here. This state holder class will be a plain class. We will call this example state. And this class takes some arguments here. We need our scaffold state and our scroll state because um, in here, in this um, class, we can't invoke this remember functions they can only be invoked uh, inside a composable. But later we will use a composable function to remember this example state, so we can pass this scaffold and scroll states inside this example state. For the counter, we say this time var counter by mutable state of and say zero by default. We don't need to use remember here and we can't use remember because remember is also a composable function but we will later remember the whole example state class, so there's no need to remember this single state variables. If you have already created view models for state management, then you will see that this is kind of similar to view model, but also a little bit different because this example state state holder class is really only responsible for UI related stuff. And the view model also accesses the business logic. We will come to view models later, but this is really only a UI state class, which has only the responsibility to manage UI state. For this should show confirm button, we could implement something like this bar, or let's make this a well, should show confirm button of type boolean. And for the getter, we will add counter greater than five. This is also UI related logic. We should show the confirm button if our counter state is actually greater than five. And we also could add something like this, show snack bar, and we get a message of type string. And in here we can then access the scaffold state dot snack bar host state dot show snack bar, pass the message, and we need a curating scope here. Yeah, but uh, let's not implement this here, but uh, just that you can imagine that we can all related UI stuff in here, in this example state holder class, and we don't need to put it up here in our composable, and we can make this composable only responsible for really showing the UI elements. And this is a really nice separation of concerns here. Let's remove this again and implement the logic to access the example state inside our example composable. We can use another composable for that and say, remember example state. In here, we can create a scaffold state of type scaffold state is equal to remember scaffold state. Since we are in a composable now, we can invoke this functionality here. 
and also the scroll state is equal to remember scroll state. For the implementation of this composable, we will simply say remember. So we remember the example state and this is why we don't need remember, for example, for this counter here. We will say example state and pass the scaffold state and our scroll state. And now we can go up here and remove all this state related stuff and we can simply say well example state is equal to remember example state like this and then we can um, access it in our example screen composable for example example state dot should show confirmation button and then we could uh, show this button or if we would have something like um, fun show snack bar with a message of type string then we could use it up here in our example screen composable we could use a launched effect which only triggers if a specific value changes and on the initial composition here we can say example state dot should show confirmation button and for the block we again need to check if the confirmation button should actually be shown because this will also trigger on the first composition of our example screen composable and in here we can then say example state dot shows neck bar and since we get a curatine scope up here we can also make this a suspend function and for example say scaffold state dot snack bar host state dot shows neck bar and pass this message and then we can say um, uh, you can confirm this now or something like this so we have a really nice and clean approach for different responsibilities and a nice separation of concerns Everything that's related to our UI state is in this example state state holder class and this example screen is only responsible for displaying something on the UI. Alright, okay, this was the first possibility for creating state holder classes. The second possibility are view models. View models should be used if you also need to access the business logic and you need to update state depending on what you get provided from the business logic. So you don't need necessarily all the time a view model. If you are just interested in state that gets created by the UI on the initialization and if the user interacts with the UI and the state changes, then you are also good to go with plain state holder classes. I've done this by myself. I've created a view model each time I needed state. But this is not necessary. It's only necessary if you need some kind of bridge between your UI and the business logic where you fetch some data and want to update state or something like this. But the cool thing is also that you can mix this plain state holder classes together with view models. We could also have um, like something like this up here. A well view model state is equal to view model dot UI state or something like this. And this state is related to the state that gets updated by the UI. Uh, sorry, by the business logic, and this is the plain UI state. Let's also quickly create a view model to have also an example for that. We can say class example view model and such a view model inherits from view model like this. And of course, I would also put this in a separate file in a real project, but I think this is fine here. In such a view model, we can also create state like this var UI state by mutable state of initial value for example we can also make this a private set which is a good practice so that we can only update the state inside our view model and we also don't need to use remember here because the view model has a longer life cycle than a composable and it also survives configuration changes if you want to make this also survive process killed and recreation of the app then you need to use safe state handle but uh, I won't cover this in this video because uh, it's already quite long. Let's imagine that we have this init block and in here we will fetch some initial data in a view model scope. So this is a curatine scope which can be used for invoking suspend functions because normally fetching data from a database or over the network are suspend functions. If we would have access to a repository, we could say repository.fetchData and we could initialize our UI state with this. And as long as this UI state is not updated, as long as, as this fetching, it shows the initial value. And after that, it gets updated with the result of this fetch data. And then we can go up here and say something like this. Well, example view model of type example view model is equal to example view model. Need to remove well here. 
And normally in a real project, we would also use something like dependency injection for this one, but for the sake of simplicity, this is fine. In here, we will then say, well, um, view model state is equal to example view model dot UI state. And then we have access to our UI state of the view model where we want to show the current fetched value or the initial value. And so we can mix up together this view model state and our plain state holder class. And this is very powerful and also a really, really cool approach for separation of concerns. Our composable is still only responsible for displaying UI elements. This example state is responsible for only the UI related state, which gets created by the UI, which only um, gets updated in the UI and uh, does not have anything to do with the business logic. And our view model state is all the state that's related with the business logic. All right, this was it for the state management series. And I think we covered a lot of things regarding state management in Jetpack Compose. I've experienced so much clean code with these examples, with these approaches, with state hoisting from the last video, and also this kind of state management. And I don't have problems anymore with managing state and um, getting complex composables and all that stuff. So I thought maybe this could also help you to build very clean composables and UI related logic.